There are reports claim that he gave you chlamydia. Is that true? He kept saying, I get tested as much as a star. So if you get tested as much as a star, I'm assuming you're clean. When I lost my virginity to him, he was 41. Even when we first started talking, when I was 17, he was 36. I was like sitting on the floor of the, the hotel hallway crying and saying like, why did I break my morals? You had sex with my friend who was 15 years old and recorded it. Allegedly, he put Molly in her water before they had sex and trafficking. He told me they want a public apology from me. Why am I, why do I need to apologize for what you did to me so I can help save your image? If you f care about your image, stop committing these crimes. Let's get into it. This is part two of my interview with Diplo's victim, Shelly August. So let's get into it. Yeah. So we don't have to go into detail about the threesome, but you there are reports that claim that he, he pressured you into having threesomes. Um, was it like multiple times or was it like one instance? So he tried to make it a threesome. Okay. He calls it a threesome, which is very interesting because it's like, no, it wasn't a threesome. Like you and I had sex that night first part of the night was consensual mm -hmm. the second part of the night was not consensual at all and dur during both times he kept trying to coerce my friend into joining and she kept saying no she kept yeah. saying no and he kept saying why why not like she's doing it like come on like why not like uh just a little bit just give me just give me head like just give me a little like a little head like it doesn't have to be long mm -hmm. things like that you know and um, he just kept trying to get her to, to join in and, um, <laughs> he's not good at taking no, huh? No. Oh no, not at all. And almost like just puts a fire under him to want it more. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And kind of just kept putting the pressure and on her and stuff. But, um, it wasn't like an active, like yeah. threesome. Actually, it's interesting because there's even a point where one of the, the videos, he took videos that night too. Mm -hmm. And that's, and it's interesting that he posted on his Instagram, that Instagram post that he did literally saying <laughs> any media, any media outlets who want to see this video, my lawyers will fly out personally and show it to you. You're <laughs> offering revenge to media while you're in the middle of a case yeah. about this. That just goes to show how much he doesn't give a f because he was trying to clarify what exactly happened when it pertains to the threesome. And guess what? In that in in one of those videos, it's him recording. It's my friend engaging with him. Uh -huh. And it's me literally like this. <laughs> in the background. No, like, no. Yeah. Like literally me like this, hiding my face. Because at this point you also knew how he recorded, no. right? So you're like, I don't want to be in this recording yeah. either. Yeah. And it's literally, it's me hiding my face. And him being like, come on, suck it, suck it, suck it together, <laughs> suck it together. Trying to encourage us to suck it together. And yeah. I'm like, no, like, no, like hiding my face. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. So what are you going to show? What are you going to show the media? Prob like probably all the other videos from that night that he took, mm -hmm. which I have no idea how many he has, because most of the time that he takes videos, it's from behind girls backs. So what's his point by trying to offer to show this to the media? What is he trying to prove that it was consensual? I don't even know if he's trying to prove that it was consensual or if it was more of just an intimidation tactic and kind of being like, you know what? Here's a message to all. This is just my opinion. Yeah. This is in my opinion of what I think <laughs> that this is what he was trying to do. Send a message to the other girls who could have come forward and been like, hey, listen, you guys want to come forward? I'm going to do the same thing to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to dox you. I'm going to edit our text messages because in the Instagram post that he had, I woke up that morning to notifications diplo has removed a like from this text message diplo uh, has removed a heart from this text message and he deleted you can even see because there's like little missing parts between the conversation where you'll see i'm responding to something he said mm -hmm. and his is not there but he probably had no idea that it shows you when someone removes a like removes an emphasis yeah. removes a heart from the message he didn't know that that same morning i got those notifications so he altered the text messages and that was so we'll get to that point and that was after you went on twitter right like you went on that twitter was, and then he responded through the instagram no that was when 
I think an article dropped about him being investigated for everything and okay um, so before we get yeah. to that point i want to talk a little bit about um there are reports claim that he gave you chlamydia is that true yes well i feel like half this town has had chlamydia so it's not but how why do you believe it's diplo i was still i was he was my only sexual partner yeah and then he was um, my only sexual partner and i was a virgin so who could have given it to me a ghost yeah and i literally <laughs> told him that too i was like so who gave it to me a ghost yeah. and and you know, at the beginning, I had denied that he gave it to me to him because I was so afraid of how he reacted every time before that when yeah. I would bring up STDs to him, you know, and it got back to him from someone else. So how did you find out you had chlamydia? Like, did you like have symptoms or did you just get tested and oh, no, it came I up? I didn't. Well, I. OK, so I the first time I had sex with him, I swear I had a rash from hell. Oh, really? I had Rug a burn. freaking rash from hell the first time I had sex with him. It was like a horrible mm -hmm. infection that ended up just being like a yeast infection. Oh, yeah. but, cranberry juice, right? Huh? What, cranberry juice, is that what fixes that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the second time, yeah, I get I got tested like within two weeks. I got tested both times within a short amount of time. So mm -hmm. How did he react when you confronted him or when he found out from someone else? Like, he reached out to you after knowing that you do have that. Was he, like... From someone else, but I had denied it to him at that point because he oh. found out from someone else. And I was, like, I was, like, upset that, like, someone else had told him mm -hmm. because of how I know how he reacts to that, to that thing, to that sort of thing. Yeah. And when you were getting intimate with him, obviously, you knew that he was, like, also fucking a bunch of bitches, too, right? It wasn't like he was... Being... Yeah, but you have to remember that he... It was under the pretense that he was clean. He yeah, kept yeah, saying, yeah. I get tested as much as a porn star. Yeah. So if you get tested as much as a porn star, I'm assuming you're clean. That's like, you know, why I, you know. Why you like gave did it up. Sans, yeah. And like sans condom, like, you know, I would would have preferred to use a condom. But of course, his his constant thing was I'm clean I'm clean I get tested a lot blah, blah blah which I actually found out later on from another girl who reached out to me and she said before she even knew that I had that he had said that to me she told me yeah one of the things that he would always tell me is how he gets tested as much as a porn star in order for us to not use condoms yeah that's his go-to saying yeah so there are some articles that refer to you as an ex-girlfriend were you ever actually officially together like dating no. and like you know did he ever like I mean after the fact, obviously, when you had a falling out, he, like, posted you. But he, did he ever, like, post when you are hanging out together, like, a selfie together, anything like that? Like, any girlfriend mm, type of no. energy? No. So no. there was no official relationship. Did he ever express wanting to have an official relationship with you? Or was it kind of just, like, a little side thing? He he didn't express wanting to have, like, an official relationship. But he would, like, love bomb me. He would say, like, I love you. And, yeah. like, um, he would – I remember one time – what did he ask me for? He asked me for something sexual. And I don't remember if it was a nude or if it was like, I want us to, it was either a nude or like a threesome situation. He was constantly trying to like convince me to have a threesome mm -hmm. with him and like see if like I could, like who who would be willing to be a part of a threesome situation with him. Um, and I just got to the point where I felt like I had to please him, mm -hmm. you know, because I was just like at that point, I was like so wrapped in like I had lost my virginity to him. Like now it's like, OK, like, you know, but um, he would say, like, it'll make me fall in love with you again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's really like manipulative. Yeah. You were like, you know, you were infatuated with him. <laughs> Also, like, I think you losing your virginity to him, like, at 21 or 22, whatever, however old you were, I mean, that's a very vulnerable position to be in. Like, that's a comfort level that you now have established with him that you've never had with anyone else. With so, anyone else, with any other guy, never had any type of experience at all with 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 guys, let alone men. Yeah. And at that time, even when we first started talking, when I was 17, he was 36. Yeah. That's when right. I lost my virginity to him, he was 41. Yeah. So he's a grown ass man. Yeah. So what led to the Las Vegas like rape situation? Can we talk a little bit about that? So he was in, was he living in Vegas? Is that because he kept bringing up Vegas? So was he like based in Vegas or? No, he, li he lives in LA. He's always lived in LA. He does he have like, I could think residency in Vegas as well. But, okay. Um, so 
what led up to so you guys went to Vegas together right um I went to Vegas with my friends and he um invited us to his his set Mm -hmm. which is interesting because again in his Instagram post he says you know she asked if they could come to my room meanwhile it was like literally in text messages I have on my Instagram truth highlights (laughs) him saying um meet me at my room at encore 501 11 p.m Mm -hmm. and i was like why can't i just meet you after he's like well because i want to fuck you before (laughs) yeah and i'm like can i bring my friends to the show tonight because i'm here with my friends and he's like are they gonna fuck me too Wow. and i literally responded saying no and i was like why does it always have to be a threesome with you and he was like it it doesn't it doesn't haha it doesn't so yeah it's very like objectifying hearing how you describe about this because it really does seem like he just treats it like like you're just a ploy in his like fantasy like him trying to satisfy himself like through you and like trying to bring other girls it doesn't really matter like i mean obviously he wants to keep you happy because he wants to have you in his ringer but like he pushes you constantly to try to make you like do these things for his own like sick fantasy that he has with you yeah exactly and then it's also like Again, with the lifting up and putting down, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's like me saying, why does it have to be a threesome? Oh, it doesn't. And then, you know, me being like, why are you being mean? And he's like, I'm not being mean. I'm just sad. You never link me. Yeah. So. So why is this Vegas situation? Why is this like a rape? What makes this different than other? Well, first of all, I was obliterated (sighs) like i was so freaking drunk Mm -hmm. and me even saying that the first part of that night of us having sex was consensual even that is just me kind of like giving him grace so you went before like he kind of asked you to before the show i guess right no i did not go before the show it was was after oh i was was yeah it was after it was after his set and everything so then you hooked up one time and then later on is when the rape happened yes But it was in the same night and it Mm -hmm. was in the same room. And like, so, okay, let me backtrack. So we we ended up going to a show. Mm -hmm. Drinks are flowing, shots, everything. I was the only one out of my friends who was allowed in the DJ booth with him. Uh, My friends had to kind of like be separated. And like there's like uh, another section on the side that they were on. And because at that time, I think he was filming something like for the Jonas Brothers. Really? Yeah. He was filming a song with them and they were like recording it there. And um, it's interesting because even that night, like while he was DJing, he texts me and goes, I knew you weren't going to make it like usual or I knew you weren't going to make it as usual Mm -hmm. while he was performing. (laughs) And I was like, I'm literally here. (laughs) I'm behind you. (laughs) But I'm like drunk and my text doesn't even really make sense. And those are kind of like the little things, too, that make a girl feel like kind of special because it, and I know it sounds stupid now, but it's like, you know, he's performing and he's DJing and I'm thinking like, wow, like he's worried about me not coming. Like he's like DJing and he's like, you're not here type of thing, you know? So obviously obviously that messes with. Yeah. Some emotions for you, especially because he did entertain it for years before ever like getting to you for years. Yeah. So, so you were already drunk while he's performing. Yeah, like it was at um, XS. Do you know that nightclub? No, I don't. XS? You don't know XS? I only go to gay clubs, girl. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Unless it's a gay night, I won't be there. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, um, yeah, so it was at the club there and um, I was drunk Mm -hmm. and then I just kept drinking and then we got to his suite. Well, okay, before I even got to his suite, we couldn't find his suite. He was Mm -hmm. texting me to come to his suite for the after party. I was so drunk, I couldn't find it. Yeah. He had to have an employee of the win who's a photographer come find me. Really? Because I couldn't find it. I kept getting lost. I was sending him like pictures. I was like, is it here? Is it here? And he was getting frustrated with me. He was like, he was like, oh my God, you're, you're never going to find it. Like, why are you, you're, you're so drunk, whatever. Like he even acknowledged it, you uh-huh. know? And, um, so he's like, I'm going to have this guy come find you. So wait in the lobby. So I wait in the lobby with my friends and his whoever it is, the employee of the win who was a photographer came down and brought us brought us up, had to like literally bring us up to the suite. Yeah. I see him say hi, like whatever we're talking. And that's another thing. I always try. 
I guess I kind of tried to like play hard to get a lot with him too, which is why I feel like now for him to like be pushing this narrative of she was an obsessed stalker fan. Like, I think it's because that's what he wanted me to be Mm -hmm. because I was always like push. Like I was always kind of like acting like he wasn't shit. Yeah. I was always acting like he wasn't shit. So like even that night, like I said hi to him and then I went about my way. Mm -hmm. Like I went to go like enjoy the party. I wasn't all up on him. I wasn't like, you know, and I think that might be something that is why I like kind of intrigued him too. Mm-hmm. Um, but so he texts me and goes, come to, it was like a six bedroom suite. He's like, everyone's going to get kicked out. Come to my room. It's um, to the left next to the bathroom or hallway, whatever. And I'm like writing back gibberish. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like so drunk writing back gibberish. I don't even know what I'm saying. And Uh, my friend takes my phone and she's like oh he wants you to go to his room like whatever and she's like here i'll take you and she literally has to guide me to his room she guides me to his room and then that's where everything started knock on the door he opens it we go in my friend was about to walk away and then he tells her no they're about to kick everybody out like you might as well just stay Mm -hmm. and she was like okay well yeah i guess like i don't want to be separated so was there anyone else in the room or was it just him it was just him. Mm-hmm. And then you guys ended up having sex. Was your friend still there? Yeah. Was she like part of it? At the beginning, no. No. She He kept trying to get her to be. Yeah. He kept trying to get her to be. But in the room is so big. She was like walking around, like doing her own thing. Like, yeah. like, you know, but then he kept trying to get her to be. And he kept coercing her, like literally just trying to coerce her. And at one point he even said, he's like, what do you want? Like, do you, will you do it if we use a condom? Mm-hmm. Like he would not stop and she was like giving excuses and stuff. And then, um, yeah. So then, um, the first time you say like, you've given him like the, like some grace and say like it wasn't rape. So what happened like later on that you now like call it rape? So I start to sober up Mm -hmm. and I start to sober up and there's a point where I'm leaning like, at the edge of the bed and I have like my head and my forearms like that and he's he's literally asking me like what's wrong and I'm not responding to him Mm -hmm. um and he's like laying on the bed I'm like at the corner like I guess you could say like here like putting my head on the corner of the bed and he's asking me what's wrong what's wrong and I'm not answering him and then he's he like leans over and like starts to like finger me Uh and I'm like I you know, I get up because I don't feel comfortable anymore at this point. I'm starting to kind of analyze the night and what has been ha- and like what has happened mm-hmm. and like what I just had to see my friend do. And what did your friend do? Well, she gave him head. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah. Is that the recording where he cro- or like he you were like this or no? Was that a different? Yeah. Kind? Okay, so that was the same night. Yeah. Yeah, that was the same night. So so I start to get up and he gets up too. Mm -hmm. And he's making it seem like he's just trying to see what's wrong with me. But he's not. He wants to continue. Yeah. I don't know, like how he can just keep freaking going. Like on Viagra or something. Like literally, I think like probably I honestly think so. I was like, what the hell? But he then like comes behind me because I like I'm putting up my panties at this point. He comes behind me. He like pushes me down on the bed like this where I'm face forward. He's behind me because it's like the corner of the bed, the edge. Uh-huh. And then he like sticks his sticks yeah. his penis inside of me. And you did not want it then. So. And I did not. So I push him back like this. Like I push him back from behind me like this. And I literally run out of the room and I start crying and I run out of the room. I, I Was did it like pull painful my- too? Especially if you don't like want it, like you just like sticks it in, right? I don't. I don't it wasn't necessarily painful. It was more like shocking. It was more shocking. Was like, I I can't even tell you how it felt because it was like what the hell. And at the time, I didn't process it as rape because mm-hmm. to me, this goes back to him doing whatever the fuck he wants. So yeah. I was like, that's just him being him. That's just him being an asshole. That's just him you know, doing what he wants. I didn't take it as like, oh, this is rape because I always thought that rape is like when you're fighting for your life and like it's in an alleyway or it's someone you don't know and you're like, you know, you feel like you're about to die. Like you're, you know what I mean? Like I didn't 
process it as as rape but then you know later on i learned that as soon as you say no and you and the person knows you don't want it that's yeah. that's rape but i didn't process it like that i was just like that was him being an asshole and i even texted him about it afterwards i was like i was upset because you stuck your dick inside me yeah you know so my friend runs out with my stuff. I left my bra. She like brought my bra out. <laughs> she brought my bag, my oh, phone, no. everything. Yeah. And at the time, like, yeah, it was just like, it was more like shock and just like, what is going on and why am I in this situation? And I remember even when I was crying to her and she told me, my friend told me, she's like, it still breaks my heart because I was like sitting on the floor of the, the hotel hallway crying and saying like, why did I break my morals? Why didn't I just like, why didn't I just wait? Why did I do this? How did I end up here? So I guess it was like a flow of emotions yeah. because I was also like already intoxicated. And it was kind of like when you're coming to and you're real, the realization. Yeah, I was like kind of sounds like a panic attack too, just like realizing like how evil he can be, and then yeah, that you let like, this person. How did feel. I end up here? Why did I not wait? Why did I break my morals? Yeah. Before we talk about the legal battles, I want to talk about like what was the fallout personally between you and Diplo? Like, what like was there a moment where you guys just had like a really bad argument, fallout, and then you know the legal things came later on, and the Twitter and all of that. Like, what was that moment that you guys, like, everything went sour? So, it was always a back... Like I told you, we always had, like, little tiffs here and there um, where one of us would block the other and then mm. rekindle. This final straw, um, with this final argument, ended with me basically telling him, like, you're a bad person, fuck you, I know a bunch of things that you've done that mm. are disgusting. You had sex with my friend who was, and this is like a, a girl who I actually became friends with way after knowing him. Uh -huh. um, but at the same time in, in 2014, she also had sex with him. But basically I told him, I said, you had sex with my friend who was 15 years old mm -hmm. and recorded it. And I know about that. Yeah. I became friends with her later on and she told me everything, you know, and and I saw the proof, too, because mm -hmm. they would FaceTime and she has screenshots of like their FaceTimes and everything, yeah. too. So I know she's not lying. And the sad part about it is that, like, for her, she was she was saying, like, even though I was 15, like, I knew what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. No, you're you were a yeah. child. Exactly. He he has the responsibility and that's the thing with like a lot of his victims it fucking sucks because in my opinion i truly believe that like a lot of his victims feel like it's their fault feel mm. like it's their responsibility or maybe that's just how it is with like victims in general yeah you know and that's why a lot of them don't want to come forward and that's also like where it goes into like girls being scared because it's like he has recordings he has nudes and they're money. terrified, money, and they're terrified, you know, about those things getting out. So I told him, and that's how the, you know, that's that was the last fight. It was me basically saying, like, I know all these things that you've done. You're a disgusting, despicable person, et cetera. And then a private investigator contacted me. So that what prompted that initial argument, though? Was it something that happened? Was it we the were, biggest thing? Or what was, like, like, what started, like, to where you went off and just, like, it was the person that we still don't even know who it was that contacted him and and from a fake account telling him like how I, you know, told people that he gave me chlamydia ah. and all of that. It was that. Yeah. And that's what led. OK, so then, and then it was a back and forth. It was a back and forth. And then it was just me being like, fuck you. Like, yeah. And then when did you go to Twitter? Was it like right after that? No. Or the private investigator. So let's talk about the private investigator and then we'll get to the Twitter. So how did you realize that there was a private investigator involved? So I guess you made kind of these threats, like, you know, saying like, I can expose you because I know what well, you've gotten never, into. Well, I never actually made any type of threats that you I was going to expose him. You just told him you know what he's yeah, done. Yeah, I just said, I was like, you know what? Like, how, like, fuck you. Like, it was literally just a fuck you. It was like, you've done so many disgusting things. Mm -hmm. And here you are again, trying to make me feel bad. You know, and it was it was like a fed up thing. It was like I'm like this game. It's always this mm -hmm. game. And it's like, why am I feeling bad for you doing stuff to me? 
And again, that's what encouraged me to come on today because it's like after speaking to his his unhinged attorney. Yeah. He told me he, you know, they they want an apo- a public apology from me. Why am I? Why do I need to apologize yeah. for what you did to me so I can help save your image for what? If you f- care about your image, stop committing these crimes. Stop mm-hmm. doing these things. You know. So interesting too, because like, doesn't like I don't know. I just like love to like imagine like having a happy relationship and like settling down. It's like it seems like he has no desire for any of that. He just wants to like. Act like a rock star the rest of his life. or Yeah, I don't think he knows how to be monogamous at all. Yeah, so then think- private investigator, so he probably, were, I'm assuming, that you know, in my opinion, he got all psyched out, hired a private investigator. What do you think the point of this private investigator was? So, you know, it's super funny. This is actually so funny. So I kept getting calls from an unknown caller, and this was shortly after. Like, this had to be, like, within days of, like, this argument. I kept mm-hmm. getting calls from an unknown caller, and I wasn't answering because I usually don't answer unknown calls. And the pri and okay, so I was watching a Netflix documentary one night, and it was the Jeffrey Epstein <laughs> documentary. Uh-huh. And in that documentary, it was talking about how he had private investigators follow and harass his victims and intimidate his victims. My phone's ringing again, and it's the private number. While I'm watching this, yeah, I go to the bathroom because I was with my friend at the time. I go to the bathroom and I answer it, and I'm like, "Hello, who is this?" And he's like. Is this Shelly? Um, and he's like, is this Shelly who lives on and starts saying my address? Uh-huh. And I'm like, who is this? And he's like, starts saying my my other address back at, back at home in Miami. And he's like, like literally saying all these things about my life, saying like, I know your dad's a police officer too, right? And your mom does this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? And he's like, hi, I'm John. Like before he even introduced himself. Yeah. He's like saying all these things he knows about me. Of course, I'm not going to hang up because, you know, it's like he's saying where I live yeah. and everything. So I'm like, what the fuck? And he then introduces himself, says his name. And he's like, I'm a private investigator. I was hired on behalf of Wes. And you is know, that Diplo's name, right? Yeah. yeah. His middle name, nickname. His mm. name is Thomas, but he goes by Wes. <laughs> okay. Um. So, so he was yeah. hired on behalf. Did he explain what his goal was or? He basically said that he was hired on behalf of him and like um, wants to tell me that Diplo is not someone I'm going to want to go up against. Wow. He literally said that. He's like, trust me when I tell you Diplo is not someone you're going to want to go up against. And I and he's like, just to give you reference of like what you're dealing with here. I had a phone call with with him and his attorneys earlier and there were six people on the call on his team. Really? Yeah. Three attorneys, a manager, this and that. And like, he's like, yeah, they're big time. You're not going to want to go up. And then I started explaining things to the private investigator. And actually, I I started, I broke down crying. Uh I broke down crying. And I think the private investigator ended up feeling bad. (laughs) Really? He did. He ended up feeling bad. He was like, you know, after I started explaining everything to him and I explained to him why I believed he was even probably hired is because I had just gone off on him and told him all the things that I know about him and what he's done and what he's done to like other girls I know. Mm -hmm. And then the private investigator felt bad and he was like, whoa. And he was like, wait a minute. And he literally was like, he, he started apologizing to me. (laughs) Really? Yeah. He even texted me after and he said, listen, I don't know you, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. And the last thing I would ever want to do was end up in court having to like testify for something like this. And I will never take a case like this again yeah so then was that the end of your communications with that investigator (laughs) yeah he did he he did say that he wanted to meet me and he was like when you come back to la like my office is near your apartment like we should meet for coffee and yeah and i i didn't you know i I just i hate like the manipulation and i think like back then i was just so fucking naive that even like to an extent i was like oh my god like maybe he's nice maybe i Get some support somewhere. Maybe yeah. I can get some support. And I like considered meeting him. I literally considered meeting him and, yeah. and and I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't because they probably just would have used whatever they could, you know. Yeah, to get out me. of you to use yeah, use against you. So yeah. you ultimately went to Twitter and was it prompted because of the private investigator? I was scared after that. I was fucking scared after that. I tried not to 
do anything else and like you know push any like buttons, buttons. and um so i didn't take to twitter until the quinlan blackwell thing came up so when did like compared to the twitter to when he started accusing you of like harassment and all those things like did that come after the twitter post so let's talk a little bit about the twitter post so you posted this thread about your somewhat of your experience with diplo how did the internet react to it at first it blew up like the reason why is because quinn was already trending because she was living with him and people were calling out people were calling out how weird and creepy that was mm -hmm. and i tweeted not even thinking that it would really like get that much attention i tweeted saying why are you guys all freaking out about this now? She's been living there since she was 17. <laughs> like mm -hmm. when I went there, she was living there and she was 17. Weird. You know, and like no one else knew that, I guess. So like that's why it got so much attention because people were like, wait, what? She's been living there since she was 17 because at the time she was 19 and they thought it was weird. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's been living there for a couple years now. And then, you know, she ended up coming back out later on and saying that in that video that she that she posted where she's crying and she's like, this producer like told me to move out here when I was 17. Like, so she validated what yeah. I was saying and proved that I wasn't lying. And we'll talk a little bit more about her um, later on and what has happened with her, because it does seem like she is another, like, you know, part of this story where it's a pattern when it comes to Diplo, but Diplo ended up like trying to, I guess, like tarnish your name and your reputation and put some things onto you, like, for example, claiming that you were harassing, trespassing, stalking him. Um, where do you think, do you think this is just another tactic here to try to dismiss you completely as maybe some crazed fan? Yeah, well, I, I w actually really wanted to shed light on, on that, you know, his lawsuit that he quickly threw together was... I believe even a stalling tack was used as a stalling tactic because prior to that, when I had retained Lisa Bloom for pre-litigation, mm -hmm. we were like, I have to be careful with like how I worded just because it's like, there's some limits like mm -hmm. confidentiality and stuff, but they basically used their tactics to stall and, act like they were going to be acting in good faith mm -hmm. to come to a resolution and instead they they use that to you know quickly throw together a, a bogus lawsuit and throw these claims in there and get it out there first because they knew uh, that i had intended well maybe getting information from you to try to like Ah, so they tried to play along at they, first, like they're yep. going to be on your team but then they just gathered what they needed to then try to make a case against you well well, not even gathered what they needed to make a case against me. It was more so just like stalling. It was literally just stalling. It or maybe even seeing where you were, or what seeing, you had. Seeing where I was, what I what I had and and all of that. And then they strategized and they strategized to get it out there first. They wanted to be the first one to do it. You know, his Instagram post said that Lisa Bloom dropped me. Lisa Bloom did not drop me as a client. She was only retained for pre-litigation. That is what mm. our agreement and our retainer agreement says, okay? Yeah. Pre-litigation. So apparently she doesn't really even do trials anymore and stuff like that. Like she's not really like big she on She does that like shit. that initial like PR and like gathers all the press. And, and I regret, oh my God, I regret, re I literally regret ret like retaining her. Do you her. think she's not like a great person i've heard mixed reviews about her i mean she represented harvey weinstein and i didn't even know that yeah until after you know and like she reached out to me the reason why she reached out to me is because she was representing another victim of his whose claims are even do we know who that types. is no do you know who it is though like person i do yeah okay yeah. i do but that's the thing there's other people out there who have tried to get their justice against him and he's been able to keep it so compressed and under wraps. And, and I'm the only one who's kind of basically still standing and he's still doing everything he can to push me so far into a wall where I just have no escape and just like put me in like financial ruin, basically, you know, yeah. and 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 the threats continue and all of that. But yeah, so that girl, she had Lisa Bloom reach out to me because she was already being represented by her mm -hmm. and her claims were drugging because allegedly allegedly mm -hmm. he put molly in her water oh. before they had sex 
rape, and trafficking. Wow. Yeah. That's freaky. And she's also the one who gave me the DMs that I posted on my Twitter where uh. he, where she asks him, did you give me herpes? And his response to her was, I couldn't have given you herpes because I slept with Beyonce. What the hell? Yeah. Did you see those on my page? No, no? I did not see those. You didn't see them? Yeah. He claims he slept with Beyonce. He claims he slept with Beyonce. There's, there's, there's a screen recording from her of all of their messages. And it's her literally saying, you can't just... And this was years ago. Like, mm-hmm. these DMs were before I even came out with my stuff. And, he, and literally, she said, you can't just seek out black teenage girls mm-hmm. on Twitter and then think you can do these things to them and and just because no one will believe them. Like, she literally said these things. And this was before yeah, I... Yeah, so that's probably really validating to see all that. It was so validating. And and then apparently, apparently, allegedly, he wrote to her saying, isn't the statistics for herpes mad high with black women anyway? Ugh. So she was going off on him in DMs about that. And she's like, how dare you say that and everything? And then he threatened to get a restraining order on her because, you know, and it's just like. <laughs> He's disgusting. It's wild. So I want to like get us on the timeline. So, all right, so let's, so correct me. 2020. You're with Lisa Bloom, and that's when you file like something, an initial complaint. Um, I got my TRO because of my because of my tweets that uh-huh. I had tweeted a fake account, which we believe was was him, uh-huh. and I, and I feel like it had it. I have no doubt it was him because the the screen recordings of my text messages was from his phone. Yeah. It was literally from his phone. It was almost similar to the Instagram post that he posted, which was a screen recording of our text messages, except this one was a screen recording of all of my nudes. Oh, wow. And he was responding to every single person who was... who was He's trying to so, show support or something? Show support or <gasps> wow. validating, validating what I was saying. Like, validating and saying, like, oh, this happened to me before, too, and, like... This happened to someone I know, too, and, like, he's known for this. Every single person got a copy of the screen recording with my nudes. Uh, that's so violating. Full vagina, <laughs> everything. breasts, face, showing Were you able to get everything. like all that removed or do you think like some of that still exists online? I have no idea. Well, it. I don't think it still exists. I mean, whoever saved it, yeah. whoever saved it Weirdos has it. There. But um, the page doesn't exist anymore, of course. And then yeah. I'm sure he used, I'm in my opinion, I'm sure he used like a VPN Mm-hmm. To like not be tracked, you know. And it looks like he retained Brian Friedman, who we do not like Brian Friedman on this no. channel. I think we've actually protested in front of his office before. Um, is that who called you last week? No, it was another Brian. <laughs> another Brian. <laughs> another Brian. They got two Brian's on at that firm. But this Brian was able to issue a restraining order against you, correct? So I had filed my TRO first, which is a temporary restraining order. Yeah. For the revenge porn. Uh huh. And um, the day of the hearing, they went to the court and filed one against me. For like trespassing, stalking, all those things, harassment? Um, No, it wasn't for trespassing. Um, It was for stalking, like stalking, harassment. They didn't file. They didn't come up with the trespassing thing until later on when they did their little lawsuit yeah, thing. Yeah, trying to finesse anything they yeah, could, they, right? Yeah, they tried to throw something together really quickly, but it was like the, the harassment and stalking i guess um the day of our hearing so then it got <sighs> continued oh because then they had to look at both cases i guess and yeah and it got to continued other. and what happened was they suggested and i and the reason i obliged to this is because at the beginning my identity was not known to the public mm-hmm. like even my tro it was filed redacted so my name wasn't out there or anything lisa bloom would refer to me as a young woman not shelly august you know but yeah. Another tactic that they like to use, which is also how he got one of the other girls to drop their lawsuits, is that he'll threaten to put their name in his lawsuit against Uh, you or his restraining order against you. So then it becomes public. And then his fans can go after you if they want to and all the weirdos. Yeah. So so, um, they said, let's do a mutual private restraining order. Mm Mm-hmm. We'll do a mutual private one. And it was like, you know, under the guide of like, okay, at least my identity will remain private. But it kind of further protects him at the same time. And it did. Yeah. And 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 
what sucks the most about that is that's how I ended up in this arbitration bullshit. So you filed a lawsuit and you sued him for sexual battery, defamation, and fraud. So the sexual battery would be the Vegas situation, correct? The defamation. Well, the sexual battery is multiple is multiple things because I mean, like you know, you gave me chlamydia. Yeah. You told me you were clean, so you lied. That's also a part of the fraud. Yeah. Sexual battery is like the multiple things that he did: intrusion of privacy, which is recording me without my consent. Yeah. And then the defamation would be that he had been posting against you trying to dispel the rumors. And that's how he claims that you, or that's how you claim that he defamed you. Well, the first defamation claim actually wasn't even, wasn't that. We added that later. But the first defamation claim was, he was telling people that I was arrested before for stalking. I've never been arrested in my entire life. Yeah. He's been arrested. For trespassing, multiple right? Times, and assault. And he's been arrested for trespassing, which is so interesting. <laughs> it's like, wow, the projection is just unreal. Yeah. You know? And even during the arbitration, he lied about that. Like, literally, you know, the, he was asked, have you been arrested before? And he said no. Mm. And the proof was shown that he was. His arrest record was shown. And then he was like, well, I thought that if you... um Well, I thought that if it's expunged, it doesn't count. And it's like, no, the question was, have you been arrested before? Like, you're under oath. Yeah. And you're still lying. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give a fuck. Well, he seems like he's got this, like, privileged mentality, too, that he's untouchable. Like, completely untouchable. So um, So, one of the articles I came across, like, claimed that Diplo had won, like, a $1.2 million like I guess settlement from you can you kind of break down like why are they reporting that he had won and what does this in reality what does it mean so a lot of the media got it wrong where they said like you know he won his case against me like revenge porn stalking Mm -hmm. trespassing case that's absolutely not true the arbitration award has absolutely nothing to do with our civil litigation cases The arbitration award is the bullshit that I ended up wrapped into because of agreeing to the mutual private restraining order. The mutual private restraining order agreement within it had a non-disparagement provision as well as no indirect or direct harassment, right? So he was able to win 10 breaches which were $50,000 each because of tweets that were considered indirect harassment, including, but not limited to, Taylor Swift lyrics. Really? Me saying, I never trust a narcissist, but they love me. Me Uh. tweeting that. As I'm listening to the song, I'm listening to the song and I'm tweeting it. They used that against me. They said that was about him. The one where it's the same song and she says... um, I don't regret it one bit because he had it coming. They used that. Wow. They said that was indirect harassment. A Rihanna tweet. <laughs> a Rihanna retweet. I had retweeted her saying, never underestimate the ability to make a man, for a man to make you feel guilty for his mistakes. And they, just a retweet. A retweet. They used that. So the judge awarded him, awarded that? Like they, the judge sided with him over that? So, <laughs> the, the arbitrator was a previous judge who actually is good friends and family friends with, well, to my belief and knowledge, good family friends with Brian Friedman. And uh. and, and during the first day of arbitration, during break, Brian Friedman and her were just kikiing. They were like, really? oh, how's your sister? How's this? How's that? Oh, remember when we went on that trip? They're like talking about each other's family. They know each other's family. They've known each other for years. And I literally am looking at my lawyers like, we need to get her off. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was like too late. I was like, I am at a disadvantage from the very beginning with this. She is going to be biased no matter what if they know each other. And there you have it. And that's my opinion. Do you have to pay $1.2 million? (sighs) I don't have it. <laughs> yeah. So, so how then, is he going to get so it? So do you have to file for bankruptcy then? They they want they are trying to force me into bankruptcy. Basically. Because they just want to drain you until you, they, you give up. Yep. Yeah. 
they and now that's their leverage so that's why i really regret even like retaining lisa and not just going like from the beginning with like because filing. she set you up for failure with she that. set me up for failure and now i'm like pushed so back into this fight like I'm, that's actually I'm, really annoying to you knowing lisa because like she's all about making it also public getting all this press on it so how are you going to set your client up to the point where like for you as a lawyer, you operate with exploiting so many women and survivors and pushing them forward and like putting them in really scary places without a lot of support. How are you going to then take someone like you and then make it so that you are almost silenced in this situation, especially when you're like, you know, standing up for yourself? It's not like you're trying to crawl and hide into the corner. So she really screwed you up with like over with that. Yeah. And so then that's a different case right there. And then you've got and your other like case. And it's like now I have to be afraid of like even like I can't like, you know, I, I stayed off of Twitter for a while because I'm like, yeah. I can't even tw I <sighs> if I tweet like the sky is red today and it makes me annoyed, it's yeah. going to be about him. Yeah. And the re what their argument was and why the arbitrator claims to have agreed with them is because of how public the case had gotten. <laughs> that any reasonable person who viewed my tweets could automatically assume that it was about him. Yeah. So if they assume that it was about him, it could cause indirect harassment. It was just such bullshit. Yeah, and they really were like pulling anything they could to grasping, try to like make their case. Literally like grasping at straws, yeah. So, um, so then that's a different case because that pulls from the restraining orders. But do you still have this case where you have sued him for defamation like sexual battery is that still ongoing yes that is still ongoing which sucks because like the media you know i i, I believe that they went and this is supposed to be a confidential arbitration and yeah. somehow it ended up with tmz how convenient right you yeah. know and even during my call with with the lawyer he let it slip he let it slip and said i know we've gone the media route with this before but now we realize that's unnecessary wow oh really now you realize it's unnecessary after you've like literally caused all this distress and strain for me. It's been such a strenuous battle. Like there's, there was a point last year where I was throwing up every single day. I was driving. Even when I would like go Ugh. to nanny, I would be driving. I couldn't even make, I had to stop working because I couldn't so even anxiety. do it. I had so much anxiety. I would stop the car and be throwing Throw, sorry, throwing up in the middle of the road. Yeah. I've actually been there too. I had one job one summer and it was the worst job of my life. And I never had, it's like a bodily reaction. Like you'll be like, I remember just dry heaving in the morning, just like out of stress. Out of stress. And it's crazy. Like what that can put on you. Like even like now, like having like depression because of this and like insomnia and like you feel like the mental exhaustion, you know, trans, transforms into physical exhaustion yeah. it just completely like well it changes how you interact with the people in your life too you know yeah. it's like i feel like when i've been in my worst points too it's like i've not been a good friend or a good boyfriend it's hard to like be the best you when you've got yeah. like all this stress and it, and i've actually unfortunately like i've lost people because of it i've lost like he's he's cost me a lot yeah for he's someone who claims that you cost him so he's much cost he's over me here a lot. Yeah. Acting like nothing has really even happened. And I, and I think it's actually so disgusting how they took that arbitration situation and like has because me looking online, if I'm just trying to look into the Dipbo case, it seems like case closed and, it you know, like you were a liar and that he's a big winner now. And it's just like that's so far from the truth. And I think he even tweeted like big win today for me and my family. And it's Ugh, like, are you kidding God. me? Like it has nothing to do with the actual case. It has Everything to do with me tweeting Taylor Swift lyrics and reposting Rihanna. Yeah, and your well-connected lawyer that wasn't he accused of like rape? Like that yeah. was that guy too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. imagine me having to sit in a deposition with someone Brian Friedman who is alleged allegedly rapist. a rapist, but he settled the case. I mean, I, they do say that you know a settlement isn't a isn't an admission of guilt, but Brian Friedman is quoted in his own interview where he says, "You don't settle." Unless you actually did the, yeah. the crime. His so own words. his own words. Those are his own words. So, yeah, he settled. And that girl was 17. Yeah, Back oh, in the really? 80s. Yeah, yeah the yeah, girl, she was that. 17. I remember Alexa, like, knowing about the article before it even came out. And, like, it, it was so interesting. Because I even confronted Perez Hilton about it before the article was out. So Yes. And, a, and, and you know what? I watched your interview with Perez Hilton. And I love you so much for calling like for calling that yeah. out and not being afraid to call that out. But 
something Perez said that was kind of interesting is he was like, I will tell you this, the person with the most money always wins. Mm -hmm. And I'm realizing that now at the beginning, I was like, I don't understand why girls are afraid to come forward. Like there's power in numbers. Like Mm -hmm. his Instagram post kind of had an adverse effect where so many girls were coming, coming forward to me, sending me their proof and everything, but they're terrified. And I'm like, why are you terrified? You have your proof, you have support. And now I realize it's because the lengths that these people will go to with unlimited resources is just. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So yeah. we've got 10 minutes left. Okay. So let's talk a little bit quickly about. Um, so you said her name. Her name is Quinn or Quinlan. Quinlan. Quinlan, Blackman. yeah. So there is this um, 17 year old who moved in. We briefly mentioned with Diplo. She's a TikTok star. She lived there for a couple years. She ended up like defending Diplo in some ways. And I think it's interesting looking at her story because she, you know, was connected with Diplo around the same age that you were. Obviously, she was like in person and it's a different situation. But there seems to be a pattern where he and even with the other uh, victim that you mentioned before, he likes to go after vulnerable black girls like teenage black girls. For what, actually, you know, I was telling someone I was interviewing you this past week, and they told me that the Diplo is gay too, that he hooks up with the guys. But I was like, I don't know. I mean, that guy is like really well connected. So but. he went on Emrata, which I have, which I have an issue with Emrata. Yeah, the yes. isn't she a model, right? She's a model, former actress. She so, acts like a feminist. She yeah. was very, very, very vocal about like her sexual harassment that she dealt with with Robin Thicke in a music video that she was in. Uh-huh. Very vocal, very like woman, like you know. Pro woman, whatever. Um, he went on her podcast and he basically said that he's got that he thinks he's gotten head from a guy before or some shit like that. I don't even <laughs> really? know. And everyone was like tweeting saying, "Oh, great way to deflect! Like you think like you're gonna, you know, now you want to be a part of like LGBTQ to like, yeah. you know, get away from the other allegations." Like people were like kind of seeing through it and like screw Emrata for that, right? Like why yeah. are you having this man on whenever you can quickly do a Google? research and see what type of person he is so yeah shame on her for that so quinlan um was living with uh diplo and that kind of prompted you to start sharing your story on twitter because you saw like what he was doing and you're like you know like this is kind of like similar to what i had gone through um it seemed like quinlan him had i don't do we know if they had like sex or anything we don't know but when she posted her tiktok alluding to it being a, a, about him no one knows it's not confirmed or yeah. anything but he she you know insinuated a lot that it was about him and she admitted to being groomed yeah by a 40 year old man everything like that um producer yeah um one of the text messages said i never even groomed you i only touched your nipple once and i was like here we go with the nipples thing <laughs> yeah <he's laughs> i'm like it, the dots are always connecting yeah you know So I I just want to mention Quinlan's uh, story because I just think that like it feeds into the pattern and maybe people viewing don't know, but there are multiple people and even that you've alluded to, there's multiple people who haven't even spoken out and who have been victims and actually singer MIA once dated uh, Diplo and accuses him of like emotional abuse, which I think is like after hearing what you say too, especially you like express how he like makes breaks you down to build you up breaks you down to build you up it sounds like he did that to mia as well so and he even and she even said that he destroyed her hotel room yeah which is interesting because one of the reasons he got arrested was because of fighting and he was court mandated to anger management problems (laughs) so then you can kind of relate that back to me being afraid of how he reacts when i would ask him about stds yeah about anything it seems like you can't really confront him i mean it's just his world. Everyone else is just living in it. Mm-hmm. And MIA was like successful, I think, during the time that they were like maybe a little bit more successful than he was when they were dating. I'm not too sure because oh, I remember yeah. no, he she... was like super jealous of her, oh, too, yeah. which kind of like fueled his rage. So um, with you coming out with your story and sharing everything, have you had like support, like celebrity support or anyone who's like kind of I mean, obviously other victims have acknowledged. But have you had anyone else come to you and been like, you know what? Like, Yeah, you know, I've had right. like some DJs even. I've had some famous DJs reach out to me in my DMs. I had female DJs. I had Az- Azalea Banks didn't reach out to me personally, but someone from her team did and <laughs> really validated me and was like, she knows and she's been speaking about it, which she has because she even did her podcast where she was like, oh, Diplo's always been preying on young I ethnic saw that. girls. I saw that. Actually, I've seen that clip. Yeah. And she was like, I had to, you know, I, I thank him for my career, but I had to give him some teenage pussy to get it. <sighs> she was 17 years old. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, 
I think that was the most validating of all is like knowing that even though he's try he was trying to make it seem like I'm just this crazy obsessed stalker fan, the amount of girls who came forward to me showing me their proof and sharing their stories, I was like, okay, like I'm not crazy. Mm-hmm. This did happen to me. It is I am validated and yeah. I know that I'm not the only one. You're not one. like a one off either. Especially yeah. when you start to see these like certain things you're like, oh, that's totally him. That's how he behaves. Like it is super validating. And I'm glad you have the support there. I'm Moving- just the only one who's gotten this far, I guess, with taking action. And I, I'm action. even at the point where I'm just like really like defeated. Like- yeah, towards your end. I mean, what is um as far as the lawsuit right now, what are where are you in it if you're able to talk about it? Like are you like is it going to be wrapping up kind of soon? Are you going to try it? Like, so we've had our trial dates rescheduled three times already. Uh huh. It was supposed to happen last year and it hasn't. Right now it's set for April 2024. Okay. But I just want to make it very clear that, you know, if I don't get to that point, it's not because I wanted to give up. Uh-huh. It's because I was... I had no other choice. I was, yeah. I, I'm, I'm at like this financially point. drained. The right, arbitration yeah. thing just fucked you over big time. And when it comes to lawyers who take cases like this, it's on contingency contingency. It's like they get a percentage, but it's like the leverage that they have over me right now with the $1.2 million yeah. takes away from what. And can they use that and use that in their case, I guess against you as well. So yeah, they're yeah. just going to try to keep fucking you over and they're going to just continue and they keep, and they, they threaten to take me back to arbitration yeah. too. To try to get more. To try to get more. And it's like the arbitration has nothing to do with the case. It's just yeah. whatever I'm posting. So I'm like, that's why I'm like, fuck it. Like, I want my voice back. I want my voice back. And that's yeah. why I was like, I'm coming on. I'm coming on this now because yeah. I'm done, like, being and silenced. I'm so proud of you coming on, too, because I know it's really tough and it's scary. It's intimidating. But, like, it, I think that's really important. And honestly, if you have to give up your case and, you know, if it has to happen, I think... I'm impressed that you're like sharing your story and continue to share your story because it's going to warn other people. And also there's a lot of other, you know, creeps out there and people who have had similar experiences to you and it's very validating for them. And, um, I, I just think like either way, like, I hope you, if you have to give up that case, which I feel like logistically, I don't know, unless like, you I know just, taylor swift comes over here and funds your entire thing you know someone said that <laughs> someone literally was like you guys need to like let taylor swift know that you owe <laughs> yeah. him fifty thousand dollars for each lyric you posted of hers yeah because they had their own little beef too mm-hmm. before where he was disrespectful to her too yeah well she's i know she sent like a quarter of a million to demi i believe or no not demi to um kesha during her case of dr luke wow. so like i mean unless like i totally get like if unless you are <laughs> Run a bunch of money, a lot of support. Like you, you are just another case here of like the Hollywood disgusting creeps using their lawyers to drain these people, these survivors. And I hope that like there can be a better process in the future. Obviously, it doesn't seem like there's anything improving, but um, either way, I just think that like you, no matter what like happens, you've like put up such a good fucking fight. And there's so many Thank people you. who are proud of you for it. And you doing this podcast, I hope that you can talk more about it and more people learn your story. And now that you Thank are somewhat. Thank you so much for yeah, the <laughs> platform to be able to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so honored to have you on. And just I think that this is a good time for you to like share your story for people to hear you out. And I know my audience is going to be like super supportive. So Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I literally was like, I don't even I didn't even want to go on Gail King. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I want to go on Sloan because oh I, I love like what you do with your platform for sure. Thank you. Not saying anything bad about Gail King, though. <laughs> yeah, no, no. But. You'll get there maybe n- uh, next week. Like, <laughs> start getting this story out there because honestly, I feel like I, I'm personally like frustrated with how he's fucked you legally. And like, at this point, he just, he needs to have his name dragged through the mud so that like, hopefully you can get out of this legal mess at some point and just the truth will prevail and maybe, you know, things will follow. Like, he had claims that you had hurt his career, but I think that he's hurt his career and that more people that learn about this are going to learn who he really is. And that's the truth of it all. It's you're just a, you know, a part of this story, but a big part. And thank you for sharing everything you had thank gone through. You. I'm going to list Shelly's socials all below. Go and support her through this journey, especially with these like legal cases and stuff, you know, show her some love because I can't imagine being put to that point, especially when it's so personal too. Yeah. So really great work and we're all here for you. So thank you thank so you. much. 
And um, we'll see you guys in the next episode soon. Bye, guys.